Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị. Hôm nay thứ Sáu, 24 tháng 5, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, những người Mỹ đã phục vụ ở Việt Nam có một số muốn quên, không bao giờ muốn nhắc lại dĩ vãng Việt Nam. Nhưng một số khác vẫn không thể quên. Họ tiếp tục sống với những ký ức của quãng thời gian phục vụ ở Việt Nam. Lacey Wright là một người như thế. Trong phần phỏng vấn lần này thì Minh Thúy mời quý vị theo dõi sự suy nghĩ của ông Lacey Wright đối với những công tác quá khứ khó quên của ông và những hoạt động của ông trong những năm tháng còn lại trong tương lai. Trong phần chính cũng là phần cuối phỏng vấn đặc biệt do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. Are you doing anything today that you relating to the war or, the, or your time of service in Vietnam in any way? Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Jackie Bohm, my wife and I, uh, have started a YouTube channel called Jackie Bohm's Vietnam Stories. And uh, our aim is to present uh, South Vietnam uh, in, a, in a true light Uh, and, and, which, and in a favorable light, uh, in a way that it's often not presented. Uh, and, and talking about uh, its accomplishments, for example, which don't ha have not so far got much traction. Uh, and I'm happy to say, though, that we are uh, that there are other people who are doing the same kind of thing. Professor Tung Vu at the University of Oregon, uh, for example. So we're, and we're doing that through YouTube interview. We interview, Jackie Bohm interviews people uh, and, uh, who have something to say on these subjects. Uh, our first interview was with Frank Snepp, who talks about uh, a South Vietnamese spy, a spy for the South Vietnamese government named uh, Vo Van Ba, uh, and that's up on YouTube now. Uh, and then uh, we have some others that we ho hope uh, will be up very soon, including a, uh, a, a, an interview with uh, musician uh, uh, Le Van Qua. Mm. Uh, who, is, who is really a, a cultural phenomenon and known to many Vietnamese, as an example of, of, uh, of, of, of what the Vietnamese uh, are doing and have done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. I think our time is limited, and I would like to ask you the final question. If, is there anything, any lesson to be learned from your point of view in Vietnam War? What would you say it is? Well, different people learn different lessons from the Vietnam War. Uh, some people, especially people in the military, say don't go into a war that you can't win, unless you think you're going to win it. If it's in doubt, think, better think twice. Uh, I guess that's right. Um, uh, Well, you know, there's so many lessons, and, and, and you and I have just discussed a lot of them uh, that you could uh, glean from your time there. Get to know the local population as well as you can. Get to know what they, what they want. Uh, don't think that you can speak for them. I think we, we did a fairly decent job of that, especially in the last few years. But it could be improved upon, of course. Don't, if you're from a military point of view, for God's sakes, uh, be surgical about whatever it is you do. Don't bomb villages, which I'm afraid we did, uh, to our to 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 our regret. Uh, do everything you can to avoid civilian casualties. Uh, the communists uh, 
didn't do that very well, and for, in, in, and in part we didn't do it either. That is certainly is something. But I think I think that is the kind of, of thing that our that our army, our military, the Pentagon has absorbed. I think we do uh, go out of our way now, in a way we did not do before, to uh, avoid civilian casualties. I think I forgot to ask you the final question, and let me ask you the final question about Secretary of, uh, Secretary of State Kissinger, who just passed away. That's a question a lot on the people's mind. What's your personal impression of the man? Well, uh, we discussed it a little bit when I uh, told you that, uh, that there's a point of view which says that uh, during the negotiations, uh, uh, Kissinger did the best he could, but then when implementation time came for the uh, Paris Peace Agreement, the, situa the, the, the ground had come out from under him. So that's a, a point of view, I, I, uh, and, and it's exculpatory of, uh, uh, of uh, Kissinger to some degree who has been demonized. But I guess you'd have to say that Kissinger was, was a, a realist and an overall player on a chessboard. And, and he seems to have believed that uh, you can't be sentimental when you are dealing with these huge uh, questions. Uh, and that some people are, are going to get hurt uh, during them. He is. He is apparent. He apparently uh, uh, said at one point uh, something about Jews in Russia uh, to Nixon. That's not our problem. I hope somebody does something about it, but it's not our problem. And I, so I, he was a very hard bitten realist. And I think that every time you make decisions on that basis, you're going to uh, displease a lot of people. Uh, so then, then you have to ask, well, the things that he did do, were they, did they uh, overall, in retrospect, accomplish what they were supposed to do? And the example that's always given there is the opening to China. Uh, and. Uh, of course, maybe, maybe you have to re-ask re that question, given how our relations with China are today and given uh, the, the aggressive role that China is playing in the world today. Maybe we ought to go back and re-examine <laughs> whether it was a good thing, uh, whether the opening to China was a good thing. How do you feel about the Vietnamese feeling like Kissinger should not have the authority to negotiate with us without our knowledge because he's doing it in secret? And uh, he never informed the southern government about the fate of I'm, all the Vietnamese I, I, in the I, south. I, I think you, well, I, I think you have to feel very sorry for the South Vietnamese government that that was done. Very sorry uh, that, that, that that was inflicted on them and on President Thieu. Well, you were talking about being realistic before. Do you think you have enough justification to do that, or would you rather not do it? Well, I think if things had turned out differently in the way that we had talked about, you and I would not be having this conversation on this subject. He would have been proved uh, right. Didn't turn out that way, though. Thank you very much. Do you have anything else to say? <laughs> No, thank you very much. It, uh, I, I really uh, enjoyed talking to you and I enjoyed uh, reminiscing and, and, and thinking again about these very important questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Lacey. It's nice to have you. Kính thưa quý vị, cuộc phỏng vấn của VATV với cựu nhân viên Sở Ngoại vụ Lazy Rice đến đây là chấm dứt. Hy vọng chương trình phỏng vấn vừa qua đã giúp cho quý vị có một cái nhìn rõ hơn về sự suy nghĩ, quá khứ, công tác và những suy tư 
của những người Mỹ đã từng phục vụ ở Việt Nam trong cuộc chiến. VATV xin chân thành cảm tạ ông Lazy Wright và quý vị đã theo dõi chương trình phỏng vấn đặc biệt của VATV. Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy xin kính chào và hẹn gặp lại quý vị trong các cuộc phỏng vấn kỳ tới.